Let's now join Terry Denman, Chuck Smart, and Mike Morgan, three of America's top waterfowl hunters, as they take you on another mojo migration. What you are about to see is real hunting. A couple of weeks ago, we took you on a duck hunting adventure to the dark continent of Africa. Now, most people don't think of Africa when the subject of duck hunting comes up. Places like Canada or Argentina or even Mexico have been the go-to places most often chosen when booking a duck hunt out of the country. But folks, believe me, you're missing a crown jewel when you leave Africa out of the equation. Team Mojo got a call from our good friend Big John Wiles of SYC Sporting Adventures. We had worked with Big John before down in Argentina on some of the fantastic duck, pigeon and dove hunts that SYC offers. John told us he had a new safari company in Africa he had hooked up with that specialized in bird hunting. That included duck, goose, guinea fowl, franklin, pigeon, dove, and many more of the South African game birds. John wanted to see if Mojo would be interested in heading to Kroonstad Free State Province, which is a couple of hours south of Johannesburg, South Africa, for a week of waterfowl hunting. Well. How could you turn down an invitation like that? And before we knew it, we were in the airport headed towards the dark continent. We showed you the early part of the hunt a couple of weeks ago, and most of it was done in the tall, flooded fields that surround a large lake that Hink regularly hunts. Today, we're going to show you some of the diversity that is offered when waterfowl hunting with SYC. Hink had been scouting a small pothole on the edge of the wetland, and told us that plenty of red-billed teal and white-faced whistling ducks were working the area. He hadn't seen them sitting directly on the pothole, but felt certain if we could get a few decoys along with a couple of mojos set up in the hole, we shouldn't have any problem shooting our limit. The ducks were working this hole mainly in the afternoon, so after lunch we headed down to the pothole and set up for the afternoon hunt. Let's now join Terry and Hink as they get ready for what they hope will be another fantastic waterfowl shoot in Africa. By the way, if Terry sounds a little funny, he was sick as a dog and was really taking one for the team by even being out this afternoon. So cut him a little slack if he's hard to understand. Okay, it's our second day of duck hunting here in Africa. And as you can see, I don't have no voice. I had a sinus infection when I left the States and I got it all fixed up. but. I had a dust storm around here the last couple of days. I guess I just stopped it back up and I've uh, lost my voice. So we're going to make a silent movie. It'll be some kind of a treat to you. Think You may think you're at the drive-in when you watch it. I don't know. We're going to make a silent movie because I can't talk. But I'm too far from home to quit, so we can't quit. We just got to cowboy up and keep doing it. And you just have to get over my voice. Hi, folks. I'm Mike Morgan. You know, there's one thing that a field producer or a cameraman or an editor loves more than anything and that's for the host to screw up and I'm not telling you that Terry is screwing up but but let me just give you a little history of this you know we went over to Africa and didn't take our guns we just decided to use theirs now Hink prides himself in having good equipment he takes really good care of it he's got some nice over and under shotguns and you know over in South Africa to get nice guns in there by the time you get the permits and the regulations and everything done just right and get some nice guns in they cost two to three times as much as they do here in the States. So they've got between three and five thousand dollars invested in a nice over and under. So I just want you to take a quick look. So I sure I got it. I wasn't looking. <laughs> you, you had him in the frame? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's on that. You end. see that? I, I, sure I, I wasn't even looking to the viewfinder, but I had the, <laughs> I had the uh, camera on and pointed at you, so I'm sure I got it. It's still rolling. It like went from outside. <laughs> That's why you treat some uh, treat your host guns. <laughs> Just dunk them. According to experts, how many taste buds does a mallard duck have? Is it A, 100, B, 
200, C, 1000, or D, 2000? We'll have the answer when we return. The answer is B. Mallard ducks have approximately 200 taste buds on their tongue, while humans have around 9,000. Folks, what we're going to do this afternoon, we've come in this morning, ducks just didn't do what we thought they were going to do. We scattered them yesterday afternoon, there was a ton of ducks in there, but the marsh we'd hunted the morning before was full of ducks, they weren't full of ducks today. So we also scattered this place yesterday, but the wind was blowing 40 miles an hour and we couldn't do anything with it. So we came back later after the hunt this morning, scattered this place, a lot of ducks in here. And when we came in just a minute ago, we scared up hundreds of them. The wind is blowing this direction, which means the ducks gonna land in here. We're gonna, we're gonna set our hunters on this little hump right back here, put a little burlap blind around them. We're gonna back up with the cameras up over here under this little bluff and it'll give us some cover. And we're gonna hunt, we can hunt all the way up to sunset, so we're gonna give it a shot, see what happens. Put the, duck, the decoys out in this little pool right over here. We're gonna throw a few goose decoys. I got those spur wings and the Egyptian geese in here. We'll have the, the we've seen a lot of those white-faced whistling ducks and them red-billed teal. That's what we ought to get this afternoon, and hopefully the setup will be fine. So we're gonna put it out, give it a shot, see what happens. All right, good enough. More to the left. As Tom Knapp would say, I'm having a bit of a problem with my sight picture. the duck. What you two think? more. I got it. There's two just got up off the wall. No, they went the other one. About them, about them, about them. We hit both of them, but we didn't hit that back one too hard. From the right, big and bigger birds. They'll cup around if we'll let them. Well, I don't like it.
interacting with their cubs. Now you can tell that they what they feed them. I mean, they feed them. They don't they don't feed them a steak out of a can. You can see they give them the food just like they're gonna be eating in the wild. And these lionesses are raising their cubs just like they do in the wild. It's a it's a fantastic thing to see. But if you want to hunt over there, if you want to hunt with SYC, they can cater a hunt to whatever you want. If you want to go sightseeing, if you want to go plains game hunting, if you want to hunt, you know, uh, upland birds, they have that to offer. If you just want to hunt waterfowl like we did, they have that to offer. So give them a call. It's it's a hunt that can be catered to you any way you want to do it. So let's get back to the hunt now. We aren't halfway through with this duck hunt. We're still smacking him. Terry's not feeling much better. He's getting a little bit of his voice back but he wants to shoot these ducks and we're going to shoot them right up to the legal shooting hours. On the right. Yawn like a chicken bone. Get it. I'm gonna shoot this swimming duck here, guys. They're still coming in. Get ready, Hank, get ready. Right on the deck, coming in there. Tell you up on the left. They're coming to get ready. Here. Oh. Woo! For the left. You don't shoot the high or the low. Let's shoot these teal right here. Okay, we on the teal, guys. Yeah, brother. Take a little right. How about? You like to shot that decoy. Well, he was Evan. coming in hot, wasn't he? <laughs> he was. I'm glad you got it, but I ain't hit nothing. And I don't have a clue how a guy would miss a shot like that. There's a classic example of how not to do it. This segment of Mojo Migration has been brought to you by Columbia Sportswear, trying stuff since 1938. This segment of Mojo Migration is brought to you by Columbia Sportswear, trying stuff since 1938. Well, that was a super duper afternoon duck shoot here. They always tell you that, you know, you're not coming to Africa one time. If you come one time, you're going to come back. I came the first time, I said, I'm just going to go one time, see what it's like. I'll always experience that. 
I'm on my fifth trip to Africa right now. I wish I'd on my 10th or 15th, but I just haven't had the time or the money to be able to do it. But it, it is a wonderful place. It is a different experience. And by golly, you ought to do it. Let's pick up these birds. Folks, hope you enjoyed the show today. Before we end, we're going to give you a little quick recap of what SYC Sporting Adventures is all about. Hope to see you in Africa next time. We would like to thank Big John Wiles and SYC Sporting Adventures for inviting us over to Africa to hunt with rawhide safaris. To get in touch with Big John, go to www.sycsporting.com. If you missed getting the outfitter's information, don't worry. Just log on to www.mojooutdoors.com. Click on the TV link, click on the outfitter's link, and scroll to the outfitter seen on today's show. For all of us at Mojo, I'm Terry Denman. May God bless you. We'll see you again next week. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you again next week right here on Mojo Outdoors TV. If you see us on the road, give us a shout. And like we always say, it ain't magic if it ain't Mojo. All hunts seen on Mojo Outdoors TV are fair chase.